Hi, welcome back to this, the second data update I have for 2019. Now, normally I'm an equity guy. I tend to focus on things that are related to equity valuation and I pay scant attention to the bond market. I borrow a few numbers from the bond market, particularly T-bond rates, interest rates, maybe corporate bond default spreads, but that's about it. But this year, I think I'll make an exception and have a posting and a session purely about the bond market for two reasons. First, if you remember my post on equity markets in the last one, the, the start of the year, I noted that one of the fears that drove stock prices down in the last quarter of 2018 was the worry that the economy might go into recession. Now, if we're worried about economic growth, the bond market is the place to go to see if it holds true. Because bond market investors make their assessments about inflation and real growth in the form of interest rates. So let's take a look at the bond market to see what it's telling us about the future of the economy. The second is, if you remember, when we talked about the equity market in 2018, we noted how much higher equity risk premiums became in the last quarter of 2018 and how much more volatile they became. The price of risk in the equity market is the equity risk premium, but the bond market has its own version of a price of risk. It's called the default spread. The difference between what you pay for a corporate bond and what you pay for a T-bond. It'll be interesting to see if bond default spreads show the same patterns as equities. They rise for the year, they become more volatile. So let me start by looking at the 10-year bond rate and the path it took over the course of the year. It started the year at about 2.4%. And if you remember, at the start of the year, the worry was not that the economy would go into recession, but that it would overheat. That the, and in fact, people were concerned that T-bond rates would rise through the roof. And for much of the year, T-bond rates did keep rising, above 25 above 3%. In fact, as late as November of 2018, on November 8th, 8th of 2018, the T-bond rate, the 10-year T-bond rate was 3.24%. That was a high for the year though. In the last eight weeks, the T-bond rate collapsed down to 2.68%. You're saying, what happened? Well, the same fears about the economy that spooked the stock market also pushed the T-bond rate down. So if you look at the change for the year, it was relatively modest. It started the year at 2.41%, ended the year at about 2.68%. Now, if, if interest rates on T-bonds rise, as a bond investor, you will lose money on the bond. In fact, the price change on the bond because of the change in the T-bond rate was minus 2.43%. You're saying, what's the big deal? That's not very much. Well, remember the coupon rate was only 2.41%. Over the course of the year, if you'd bought a T-bond at the start of 2018, you'd have lost minus 0.02% with the price change built in. That's bad, right? But not as bad as what you'd have done investing in stocks, where you'd have lost minus 4.23% over the course of the year. Now, before you jump to the conclusion that this shows that bonds are better than stocks, let me provide some perspective. Every year on my website, I update historical risk premiums for the US. What are those? I look at what you'd have earned on stocks as opposed to T-bonds and T-bills going back in time. This table captures the results. If you go back all the way to 1928, on an annual basis, you'd have made about 9.49%. These are geometric averages, compounded averages, 9.49% a year investing in stocks, only 3.38% investing in T-bills, and 4.83% investing in T-bonds. It's going all the way back to 1928. The spread, which is called the risk premium, is called a historical premium, because I'm looking backwards, would have been about 6% for stocks over T-bills and about 4.7% for stocks over T-bonds. Now, if I take a different slice of history, my premiums change. I've used 50-year and 10-year periods, and you can see the risk premiums are all positive, but they vary across time. Before you get too excited and jump to the conclusion that this table then shows you should always be invested in stocks, remember the last quarter of last year. There's a price you will pay for earning this premium, and that price is in the form of that gut-wrenching risk you've got to live with, especially in quarters like the last one. I'm not a believer that stocks always win in the long term, but in the US it is true that looking back in time, stocks have clearly outstripped T-bills and T-bonds in terms of delivering returns. Now, the other big story during the course of the year was the flattening of the yield curve. The yield curve, as you well know, looks at rates for different maturities for the US Treasury. The start of the year, you see the red line. That was the T. It was a mildly sloping yield curve much more mildly sloping than much more up, uh, upward sloping than it was two or three years ago. Over the course of the year, you can see it flattening up. I have the middle of the year and the start of October. And by December 31st, you can see the T-bond rate is pretty, f the yield curve is pretty flat and there's a kink in it. 
Of course, it is that inverted portion. It's not a completely inverted yield curve that led to a lot of breastfeeding at the start of December. And I have another post on why I think that breastfeeding might have been overdone because I think yield curves are predictive, but not as predictive. But collectively looking at both what the T-bond rate has done, which is not much, and how the yield curve is flattened out, it looks like the bond market is sending the same general message as the stock market economic growth is going to slow down. Whether it's a recession or not, your bet is as good as mine. But overall, the message is that slower economic growth is coming. I looked at one final number. Over the course of the last year, there have been periods where people got concerned about inflation, usually in response to a monthly or a quarterly inflation number that looked too high. Now, these inflation numbers we react to tend to be backward-looking numbers. Last month, the last quarter, there's actually a much better proxy for inflation that you can focus on. In the U.S. Treasury market, there's an inflation-protected treasury called the TIPS. And looking at the difference between the 10-year bond rate and the TIPS rate gives you a measure of expected inflation, at least as bond investors see it. At the start of 2018, that difference between the 10-year bond rate and the TIPS rate was 2%. That's expected inflation on an annual basis was expected to be 2% at the start of 2018. By the end of 2018, the difference was down to 1.78%. Over the course of the year, the number didn't vary much. It varied between 1.7 and 2.22%. So if you're concerned about inflation, you should be concerned, but at least the bond market doesn't seem to share that concern as of yet. So overall, here's the message. 10-year bond rates have not moved much. The yield curve is flattened out. There's not much fear of inflation in the Treasury market. You're saying, what now? At the start of last year, as I said, people were worried about you know, the economy overheating, T-bond rates rising. The question now is, where will they go now? And much of the talk, as usual, when it comes to interest rates, turns to the Fed. I think we pay too much attention to the Fed. I don't think it's healthy. I think the Fed's power over interest rates is there, but it's fairly limited. I'm not a great believer that the Fed can move rates to whatever it wants to be. So you're saying, what am I going to use instead? I have a proxy that I use that I find useful to judge whether T-bond rates are going to go up or down. I call it my intrinsic risk-free rate. What is it? Well, I add the inflation rate during the course of a year to real GDP growth in that year. So you see that added up in this, in this graph. And I plot the T-bond rate against this. Notice how the two move together. The biggest reason rates have been low since 2008 is not because the Fed willed it to be so, but because we had low inflation and low growth. In the last two years, the low inflation and low growth have reversed at least mildly in the U.S. In fact, by the end of 2018, if you add up the inflation rate and the real growth rate in 2018 for the U.S., that number was 5.54%, significantly higher than the T-bond rates. Now, of course, when you look at year-to-year -year shifts in inflation and real growth, you can get fairly volatile numbers. So I've also computed a smoothed-out number based on a 10-year average inflation, last 10 years inflation, last 10 years of real growth, and it's in the second last column. That number in the, at, the, in, at, the start of 2008, at the start of 2019 was about 0.9% higher than the T-bond rate. Now, when the intrinsic risk-free rate is higher than the T-bond rate, the pressure is going to be on the rate to rise. Will it rise to 3.5%? Perhaps, perhaps not. But I think looking at the numbers, one of two things has to be true. Either the bond market is right and growth is going to collapse in the next year. In other words, it's going to come down to 2.68%. Or the bond market is being over-pessimistic and that growth is actually going to come down, but not to the levels expected by the bond market and that the bond market investors will therefore have to push up rates. I think the truth falls somewhere in the middle. I think growth next year is going to be lower than it was this year. I think the T-bond rate, the, T, the bond market has over-predicted, over-adjusted for lower growth, and it's going to go back up. If you ask me to guess where the T-bond rate will be at the end of the year, I'll take a shot. 3.53%. Sounds awfully precise, right? But that's where my 10-year smooth intrinsic risk-free rate would put me at. Now, don't me hold, hold me to this, and you can get a money-back guarantee. There's a reason I do these sessions for free. But to the extent that I look at the fundamentals, that is what I see happening in the bond market. Now, finally, let's turn to the risk premium in bond markets. It's a corporate bond default spread. In this graph, I looked at the default spreads on three broad ratings classes. AAA, which is the highest ratings class. BAA, which is the investment grade, the, the, the lowest investment grade rating class, 
and CAA, which is high yield. Notice that the spreads on all three ratings classes increased over the course of the year. They increased more for the, two, for the, for the high yield bonds than they did for the safer bonds, but that's to be expected. Just as in the equity market, risk premiums in the bond market went up and they became more volatile. In fact, almost all of the increase in default spreads happened, just as they did in the equity market in the last quarter of 2018. So what's the bottom line? There's, I think, a tale of harmony here. The tale of harmony is that bond and stock markets are actually singing from the same songbook. They both seem to be sending the same message of lower economic growth and a higher price for risk. It is entirely possible that both markets are wrong, in which case we'll be reassessing this a year from today. But this is a year where the two markets seem to be in sync. Both markets are sending the same signals and we'd be crazy to ignore what those signals are. Thank you very much for listening.